So hey folks, welcome back to part two of the Isle of Man TT. And as you can see by the signs, we're just outside of Crosby. Uh, we're heading on some back roads now to head up to the, uh, the southern mountain, the one I like most, so I'm gonna show you that today. And then we're gonna wind our way down the other side of the mountain, down towards Port Erin. And then we're gonna head back around the southern tip of the island, and then up towards Douglas, where we're gonna take in a motorcycle museum. Absolutely gorgeous day again. As you can see, blue skies all the way around us, absolutely stunning. And beautiful to do it on the Bonneville this year. Really, really pleased with this bike. We've got a six month review of this bike coming up shortly guys, so stay tuned in a few weeks. So welcome back guys. What a beautiful day for a run over the southern mountain in the Isle of Man. Absolutely stunning. Expecting temperatures of 20 degrees today. It's going to be a super run. So we're going to head down this road and uh, I'll pop the uh, road number or name on the screen just now and then we're going to head up over the, the mountain, the southern mountain, which I personally think is the, uh, the best one. I did find it last year when I was having a scoot about and one place we didn't go down to from the mountain last year was Port Erin, so uh, we'll head down there just uh, today. We'll get some lunch, show you that. Road surface, absolutely beautiful. And I can't believe why none of the bikes that are in the Isle of Man are not on these roads. It's really surprising. But I guess they want to ride the TT course, which, to be honest, is full of policemen today with radar guns. So why would you want to poodle around there at 30 mile an hour? when you can head down some gorgeous B roads like this that are wide enough for two cars. Absolutely mental why you would want to not come down here. So if you do get to the island, head out and explore the south. Now just a brief recap on the campsite I'm staying at, Glenluff. Uh, it's a really nice campsite. A guy was saying last night he's been here for about 10 days already waiting for the TT. Some people have got far too much time on their hands and uh, I think he was retired to be fair. But yeah, we were both saying how the campsite's really nice, good facilities, right next to the TT circuit, but also at 11 p.m. everything quietens off, which is nice. No loud music or uh, parties going on. So I would highly recommend it. These roads, just beautiful. A little late to my right. So this road will take you up to a place called Foxdale and we're going to turn left at Foxdale, just a short run up the road. I think it's called the A3. If it's wrong, I'll put it on the screen now, but I think it is. And from the A3, we're just going to, like I say, scoot up the road a couple of miles and then do a right where the, uh, the Go 8 place is. And there's a cafe there too, actually. I've not stopped there before, but uh, I've been past it before. Now you probably recognise this because we've just turned on to the uh, same road, just the end part of it anyway. That's the last video. Literally it's just to get up the road here so that we can do a, a left. Just coming into Foxdale now. Now if you need to fill up with fuel, there is a fuel station in Foxdale and fuel prices are a little bit cheaper than the UK at the moment here. It's amazing isn't it how an island can be cheaper than the UK. The government taking too many taxes. So it is the A3 uh, like I mentioned, so we're just going to turn left here. If you do a right just here you get to the garage. The Coffee Cottage, 200 metres, turn right. 
And that is the road that heads over the mountain, guys, to Port Erin. I'll put the road name on the screen just now. But it's an absolute epic road. One of my favourites. Over here you've got the uh, coffee cottage just round the corner. And you've got the, uh, the Go Ape place. Ape Man Adventure, not Go Ape. And onto the mountain. Absolutely beautiful. To wind her up. Now, clearly you've got 50 mile an hour speed limit signs over the top. Which, uh, to be fair, I'm doing just now. And it's a lovely run. Really nice. Look at the views. Absolutely spectacular. Keep an eye on the road, though. Just beautiful. Road surface, super smooth. You could almost be in another European country. So that smooth. Nothing like the UK roads. Look at this. Look at that for a vista. Road just snaking its way over the top. Just stunning. This is what it's all about, isn't it? Views like this. Great Bonneville. And beautiful weather. Absolutely superb. If you've not been to the Isle of Man, definitely get yourself booked on that ferry. Doesn't have to be TT week. The island is beautiful. Now we've got a policeman up ahead. Doing 50, so no problems. They've probably got a radar gun up here as well. So the A27 right where the policeman is just there, down to Peel. That's a cracker of a road too. Yeah, he's got a speed trap gun. That road takes you straight down to the coast and then you jut along the coast uh, behind us, going the other way up towards Peel. That's an absolutely beautiful route. I did that last year. I'll pop a link to it in the top right-hand corner of the screen just now. Go and check that route out. It's really nice. Another police car just ahead, turning around, getting ready to set up. And then over the top, and a view down to the sea. Look at that. So that's where we're heading, guys, Port Erin. Oh, so lovely. Look how this road just snakes down the mountain here. Absolutely beautiful, all the way down. Wow. Looks like a little bit of oil on the road just there on that corner. Stay away from that. Road surface, a little bit bumpy on this lower side of the mountain. Testing out the new fork springs that I've got in from Tech Bike Parts. If you've not seen the fitting video for that, I'll pop that in the uh, top right hand corner. Now, a few of you have been asking me, am I going to upgrade the shocks on the rear of the Bonneville? Um, I've got two clicks of preload in each, each one. And that's uh, pretty good for a passenger and also me on my own. Also with the luggage that I came over with. So, two, well, two reasons I'm not going to upgrade them. 
just yet, unless I can find something that works. One is they're actually working pretty fine, no reason to swap them. And two, I was looking at the uh, either the Fox ones with the gas cartridge on the back or the Olin's ones. They do a, a nice black set. Um, basically, with my SW Motec racks, uh, they won't fit with the gas cartridges. Now, I can get some Olin's black ones without the cartridges on, but while the stock ones are working fine and I'm quite happy with these, I'm reluctant to, uh, to change them, to be honest. Just be uh, spending money for no reason. Oh, wow. Road surface smooth again. Just dropping down the hill now into some residential areas. So I'm just going to slow back down to 30. Absolutely wonderful view. Look at that. Splendid. So let's see what the delights of Port Erin have for us. So Port Erin's on the west coast of the Isle of Man. Next stop is Island. So I can see the front just in, uh, in front of us, just down there, bottom of the road, that's why we're heading. Just to give you an idea of fuel down here, um, you've got premium at 147, a lot cheaper than UK. few little cafes about with some bikes. We'll try and find one. And there's the sea. Water sports centre just there. A few people paddle boarding. So Port Erin. I just come to the end of the, the harbour wall just here. Lovely beach. Horseshoe Cove. More of that seaweed stuff. Just beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to head into town, grab some lunch at one of the cafes, and then after that we're going to head uh, along the south, past Port St Mary, and then up towards where the A7 is, towards the airport. Uh, up there you've got Murray's Motorcycle Museum, and that's what we're going to go to and have a look around the, uh, the old bikes. I believe he's got uh, some real classics and uh, some of the race bikes and things in. So excited to see what he's got for us to, uh, to have a look around at. Now, somebody was asking what my gloves are. So these are the fuel gloves. Uh, sizing is correct, actually, by the website if uh, anybody is interested. One thing that's invaluable on these trips, guys, is uh, a phone mount with a wireless charge port as well, especially if you're camping. Just means that you've got uh, full charge on your phone and uh, you don't need to take any battery backups. Literally when I'm riding around the island during the day it just charges my phone up which is uh, actually what I'm filming with just now. So there's the Bonneville. Um, there's a little Krieger bag just on the back there that you see. I've just got some uh, visor wipe and a cloth in there and then uh, on this side I've got a, uh, a little disc lock which is an Oxford one. I use just when I'm in town and uh, I've got the 13.5 litre bag just on the right side just to carry some camera gear and bits and things that I need during the day and obviously the water bottle is there but yeah she's uh, doing me proud on the Isle of Man with T120 Black Series. Beautiful crystal clear waters um, but uh, huge box jellyfish <laughs> near the surface, like the size of dustbin lids. Would like to be swimming with those in that, uh, that ocean. Really nice sandy beach. And I'm getting hungry now, so uh, 
Let's see what the calves have got to offer. Coffee shop, ice cream parlour. You'd think there'd be more cafes down near the, uh, the waterfront. Anyway, there was a, uh, a cafe up here with some bikes outside. That calf looks pretty full, to be honest. So what we're going to do is we're going to head round to Port St Mary, see what's available there. So I managed to find a veggie burger from the uh, van just on the front behind me. But yeah, what a spot to uh, have a spot of lunch. I'll just turn the camera around, you can see it. And this is Port St Mary. Crazy rock formations just there. Now I'm not sure where I'm going to watch the uh, TT tonight. Uh, I might go down into uh, Douglas, I mentioned at the end of this video we might go up from the Motorcycle Museum and uh, head into Douglas. I think what I'll do is uh, we'll probably uh, finish the uh, video on the, uh, the racing tonight in Douglas, uh, but I will go back to the tent um, just before I head down, before the road's closed. Okay, veggie burger has arrived from the van. Not vegetarian, <laughs> rather have meat to be honest, but anyway, can't complain. Uh, the only other thing I don't like is salad, so uh, Here's my, uh, my veggie burger, guys. So as you can see, I've taken all the salad off, near enough. One veggie burger, and uh, you can keep that. Don't eat green, don't eat red. I know I should, but each to their own. <laughs> okay, onward from Port St. Mary. Now I would say out of all the places to come to, Port Erin and Port St Mary are rather nice, but there's not a lot here, as in cafes and things. Not sure why they don't uh, get more visitors, but they're very lovely places to see all the same. So we're just going to jump on the A5 across the southern tip of the island now, towards Castletown, and then head up towards Douglas. Like I say, on the way there, uh, there's a motor museum that I wanted to uh, stop at, so uh, we'll tune in once we get a little nearer. Now that's a bike I would love. VFR 750R. Beautiful. And my favourite. RD 350LC in blue. Love that. That was my childhood dream bike. Kawasaki 500 Honda Super Sport A Velocet 
That's worth a bit of money. Harley Davidson. Not seen any of those before. Yeah, cheers. Thank you very much. Very interesting. Honda VTI SB2. That's a bike I would like. Going up in value now. Used to be able to get one of them a few years ago for six grand. Not anymore. They double that now. BSA 500cc A7 1954 on the Honda Super Z900 true classic that really nice another BFR 750R. Two of them. Oh, and the 400. That's lovely. Wow. And then the 250. Spectacular. Wow. VF 1000R. Honda. This place is full of bikes, absolutely full. Norton's, Bella Sets, Honda's CBX 1000, 750 Auto, Royal Enfield's 350 Gold Star. Oh, wow. 250. And look, the marble. A little bit of oil on the floor. <laughs> Typical. Another Triumph Bonnie here. That's lovely. No, it's not a Bonneville. It's Triumph Tiger 100 500cc twin. Why would they call that a Tiger? Still pick them up for good money. And then the Ducati 750 Sport just there. Next to another NC30. Looks like a race bike. Mega FJ1200. Couple of Triumphs. Just there, that's the one I would love. When I was a boy, that was the thing RD 350 and 250. Look at these. 1950, 250 cc. Five hundred. Nineteen forty-seven. Jeez. What a collection. Old BMW. Look at that boxer engine. The old BSA. Honda CB300 RS. Don't remember that. Maybe it's an import. It's 
Suzuki, Honda, Greaves, another Greaves, never heard of Greaves, 1963, Valisets, Royal Enfields, 250 Klepper, 1960, Royal Enfield, Honda, 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 lots of Hondas, MV, that's lovely, and then a Mondial, and then lots of cabinets full of carbs and trinkets and things, just amazing, what a place. jam-packed full of bikes and bits. Oh, Moto Marini. So those have come about again. Uh, the Italian manufacturer now making new bikes in China under the Moto Marini name. Never seen one that old though. Wow. So that's Morris Motorcycle Museum, just after Ferry Bridge. They've definitely got a lot of uh, old bikes stacked up in there. A lot of money's worth. Somebody mentioned to me that that was one of the better collections of older stuff on the island. But yeah, that uh, blue and white LC350, I would love to get me one of them. Now a friend of mine has one potentially for sale, but it's not. It's the red and white one, which I suppose I could always get and repaint. But that was my, uh, that was my boyhood dream used to see those flying about, the sound, the smell, that's really what got me into biking. Now entrance to the place uh, was £10. Okay, so we're just going to head back to the campsite now, a little bit of a chill out, and then we'll uh, come back to you guys any minute now with uh, some live action from the grandstand down in Douglas. <laughs> So we've just had the super bike and super stock run out and there's just a slight delay because of a, a bike's dropped oil on the track. Uh, next up I think is the uh, super twins and then the sidecars. On the grandstand, uh, is it worth paying £10 to get in there? I would say not for practice week but for the race week definitely. Now the guys have been doing 131s tonight. The problem is the sun from the west is in their eyes as they're uh, going round. So uh, yeah, yesterday we saw quicker times in the daytime, but uh, at night time, just with that low sun, really difficult for them. Now it's quite difficult to film in the paddock area because they've got music playing and uh, copyright infringement and things like that. We're about to go into the merchandise store get a t-shirt why not while we're here so just head back to where the bike's parked and then i'm going to head down into douglas uh, thanks for tuning in the guys and uh, if you're not a subscriber to the channel then don't forget to hit that subscribe button and obviously give the video a like if you can all helps the channel thanks very much and uh, ciao for now